Cardiovascular disease is the major cause of death in both women and men. Yet it can present differently in men and women. Historically, there is an underrepresentation of women in clinical studies, and this is currently still the case. However, most cardiovascular research is not done for women and men separately. Given the differences in pathophysiology between women and men, pooling of data has led to non-optimal diagnosis, treatment and prevention of several cardiovascular diseases in women. So what are the major biological differences? As women age, their hearts become smaller and stiffer, whereas male hearts become larger and thinner with age. We study two main kinds of diseases, those of large arteries, atherosclerosis and coronary spasm, and those of smaller arteries, microvascular disease. Take for example, atherosclerosis, a disease of the vasculature, where lipids and inflammatory components accumulate in the artery walls, forming plaques over time. These plaques can lead to severe artery occlusion and end in a potentially fatal myocardial infarction. However, women are more protected until menopause. This may be due to their difference in hormone levels, such as estrogen, compared to men. After menopause, both heart disease and atherosclerosis prevalence in women increases dramatically, overtaking male prevalence at advanced ages. In addition, we now think that the low numbers of diagnosis in younger women are in reality higher, as silent myocardial infarctions are common. Furthermore, plaques themselves are different in composition between men and women. In men, plaque is more calcified and lipid-rich. The fibrous cap is thin and eventually ruptures. In women, plaques are more stable and more likely to undergo plaque erosion without rupturing the fibrous cap. So far, most research has been done on understanding plaque rupture and not plaque erosion. These eroded plaques are thought to form small thrombi that travel to the smaller vessels of the heart and may lead to heart failure in women. The goal of our research group is to understand how these sex differences emerge in order to improve prevention diagnosis and treatment of cardiovascular diseases in women. In order to achieve this goal, we carry out well-balanced clinical studies where men and women are studied separately. Firstly, clinical investigations are performed where we obtain relevant information from the patient regarding their medical history and symptoms. We measure the function and structure of the cardiac and vascular system and take blood samples for patients at medium risk. Furthermore, if the patient's risk is high and surgery is required, we also obtain tissue samples. In our plaque studies, the tissues are brought to the lab bench where different sections of the plaque will be used for different scientific experiments. First, the suspected plaque section that caused the symptoms is sliced and its composition is studied using pathology techniques. Another section is used to study gene expression in the plaque. We have identified gene expression networks which are more active in stable plaques in women, making these plaques more dangerous. Another plaque section is used to study epigenetic marks in the plaque, called methylated DNA bases. The switches that turn on and off the expression of genes in the plaque and are relevant for identifying how the female biased gene networks are regulated. Finally, another plaque section is used for growing plaque cells for in vitro experiments. These cells allow us to perform experiments directly on patient cells. The rest of the sections are stored for future experiments. Our team of bioinformaticians and data analysts use the state-of-the-art data analysis techniques to identify patterns in the DNA and gene expression that are important for atherosclerosis in women and understand how we can prevent these plaques from occluding the vessels. Our research allows us to understand how this disease develops and progresses in women. But our task doesn't end there. Leveraging all these vast data, we then investigate new ways of diagnosing cardiovascular disease in women. We are currently working to identify methylation patterns that associate with our female networks and can be retrieved from blood samples and used as early diagnostic markers of dangerous atherosclerosis in women. Studies using similar approaches are currently under development for other heart diseases that are common in women, 
such as heart failure and microvascular disease. We believe that this unique combination of clinical, lab-based and data analysis techniques can help us uncover new leads for diagnosing and treating heart disease in women.